Hey everyone, Jordan here. Today is the announcement of Intel's new Arrow Lake Core Ultra Series processors, and that means we can now do motherboard previews. Today we have got the big boy ROG Maximus Hero Z890 to look at. And if you're wondering, what's in the box? This was the press kit that Asus very kindly sent me. I will do a separate video, probably a subscriber video, which is, I'm gonna be unboxing this and talking more about what else is coming up on the channel soon but i'll link that on the card if you're curious about what's inside there some very cool other stuff that you will get a bit of a sneak peek on as well of other reviews but today we're going to be looking at the z890 hero so we can get it unboxed and we'll check it out I'll just quickly look around the box for those that are curious but there's lots of ai stuff on there z890 we've also got wi-fi 7 we've also got the nitro path dim technology we first saw that on the strix and hero for the x870e that just basically allows you to overclock your ram a lot higher than you might be able to support on another board so for example gives you another 400 megahertz of frequency so let's open this we have got a nice little panel that opens up with the box itself telling you how to install the new quick release slide and latches we'll take off this plastic to reveal the board but we will quickly put this to the side and have a look what else is included first so on the right hand side we've got some information there's the stickers looks like a double-sided sheet for those of you that like those there's a quick start guide nicely labeled to show you what goes where and then that will give you some more information inside no thick manuals we're seeing that as a bit of a trend all the reduction in paper from this lot but some might like that some might not i do like a thick manual personally i've also got one of their rog membership cards you do see these on some products the uh, strix lc3 i think has got one included but you do see them on certain ones this panel seems to come out as one kind of unit but below we've got a couple of cables going on so there's a three pin to like the little fantex adapter we've got some pads for m.2s so there's three of those another one for we've got the quick connects for the front panel connectors there's another one of those rubbers a little quick slide if you're going to add another m.2 drive a smaller thermal pad i believe that's if you add yeah onto a 110 mil because you need to extend the length another quick release a couple of quick latches for the nvmes what's it got well, this is heavy a metal bottle opener something a little bit different quite nifty we've also then got a a little fan holder another rubber for nvmes and then we have got some sat cables there's four there two of which is right angled our wi-fi antennas magnetic can adjust it that will also have the quick release ends and then lastly we have got a little box which has now got a usb stick for our drivers rather than the cd good job basis love to see that we're getting rid of cds finally so now we can bring in the board and oh my is it heavy this is some of the thickest VRMs that I've seen on the board this year. Look at all that aluminium, just really thick and chunky. Goes all the way down to the inside there. Even if I tilt it up here, hopefully you'll be able to see down inside. Big old chunky bit for the top NVMe, but of course we'll go over that. In terms of the power stage, this thing's absolutely crammed. It's a 22 plus one plus two plus two SPS power stage. You can see all those MOSFETs and chokes there. Before we go and look around the board, let's just turn it over so you can see that nice matte and kind of spot gloss back plate that it's got. A bit of a shame you won't see it when it's in the case though, because that is really nice. Obviously a little detail that you will be paying for, but you won't see, so pros and cons to that, I think. So let's now take a look around the board. Top left, we have got two eight pin EPS connectors. They are solid pins as well. Moving to the right, we've got four four pin headers. We've got a little postcode readout our first three pin addressable RGB to the right hand side. Start and flex key. So the flex key allows you to adjust what you want to put onto that button. So for example, I think most people use it as reset, but you could use it for a different function if you wish. We've got our 24 pin for motherboard power. Then we've got an additional eight pin. This will be to the PCI lanes if you want to really push overclocking. Previously, we have seen that used to provide additional power to USB-C header though, but for this one, it is for the PCI lanes. Then we have got two USB Type-C headers. The top one is 20 gigabits per second, and then the one below is a 10 gigabit second port. Then on the right angle, we have got a USB 3 header, 5 gigabits per second, and we've got four SATA 6 gigabit ports. Then bottom right hand corner, we've got our usual front panel and also a retry button. We've then got another four pin header, 
two USB 2 ports, got another USB 3 header that's 5 gigabits per second and then another three 4 pin headers, two more 3 pin addressables so that's a total of 3 pin addressables on this board and then eight 4 pin headers. We've also got a Thunderbolt 4 header there, some people will be interested to see that so it's good to know. We've also got an alternate PCI switch there if you want to do different modes. And then on the bottom left, we have got our front panel audio. Now this board uses the ROG Supreme FX codec, which is ALC4082. And it also has their quad DAC built into it as well. So our LGA 1851 socket there for the new Core Ultra series processors. Then to the right of that, we have got our Nitro Path DDR5 DIMM slots. A conservative guess for capacity, I'd say around 192 gig. You may see that pushed with future BIOS updates though, is that something that can be done? But at the time of filming though on the 10th i'd say around 192 just to be safe and then in terms of frequency you can support up to 8600 mega transfers per second and then you can push it further if you want to manually and i expect this will be a board where people do so so now going down to our expansion slots our first nvme slot here we have a little catch that then releases that really easily i think that's the easiest one that i've taken off a board so far and then it's a really thick piece of aluminium or aluminium Thermal pad on the back, don't forget you can extend that to up to 110 if you wish. That's also got one of their quick release catches as well, so you just put your NVMe in and then bring that down to clip it in. We've then got our first X16 slot, so Gen 5 as you'd expect, armoured. This also has their quick release, let me grab a graphics card so I can show you that. So it's installed like so. If you go to pull it from the right hand side it won't come out, but if you put it from the left it'll just pop out quite easily. I really do like that, I think it's implemented very well really easy to put that back in as well nice to see that next one we do need a screwdriver for so i'll quickly grab one to reveal a whole host of other nvme support look at that all the thermal pads on the back ready to go so we have an additional five nvme slots here so total support there for six nvme drives on this board you can do one gen 5 up to 110 and then there's another two gen 5 slots and another three gen 4 slots we'll be able to talk about the performance and stuff when the other embargo lifts for performance We've got a couple more expansion slots below the NVMEs. There's an X1 slot, and we've also got a Gen 4 X16, but that's only wired to X4. You can see the pins just in there, but certainly good enough to use capture cards, sound cards, or if you want to put a 10 gig network in. In terms of the radio, we have got a BIOS flash button and a clear CMOS, very handy buttons to have. We have an HDMI. I was going to say if you're going to use a K series processor, but one of the ones that supports onboard graphics now. We've then got a two and a half gig and also a five gig Ethernet, so great if you're going to use a home server or a NAS that can support those throughput. We've then got the four red USB ports, these are 10 gigabits per second. We've then got a Thunderbolt port, there's two of those there. A 10 gig USB C header, and then the blue USB ports are five gigabits per second, Wi Fi 7 antennas, and also a mic in, line out, and an SP diff. So an absolutely packed board, obviously capable for the highest end processes. We're certainly going to see some records broken with the Nitro Path DIMM slots, I think, as well, especially as it supports 86 straight out of the box. I certainly can see uh, that being pushed much higher manually. All the bells and whistles, as you'd expect from the high-end Hero board. Let me know what you think about it down in the comments box below. No pricing, of course, at the current time of filming, but the last one I think retailed for 599 so you could expect a similar price for this one get subscribed and ding the bell so you don't miss when i use this in a build i am planning to have one um, for the actual launch uh already for you guys to watch it's going to be an absolutely crazy rig by what uh i can guess by looking at this yeah stay tuned for the other overviews as well i will have some others from other companies with msi and aurus as well so there are some other boards to look at and then i'll be doing a roundup with my thoughts on the series as a whole also the press, press kit as well, I will include the Intel press kit as well when that arrives in that video. That might be a subscriber video though, so it might be a bit more of a sit down and chat one, but we shall see. But for now, this is the first overview, the Asus Maximus Hero Z890. Thank you all for watching. A big thank you to Asus for sending this out for me to look at. I really do appreciate it. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you all in the next one.